so all right so this is uh the first recording of the uh podcast or just i don't know personal chronicle of our viewing of ghibli movies the first one being nausicaa uh we're just going to be having some uh thoughts about it talk about maybe just you know what uh what worked with the movie narrative wise plot i don't know plot wise uh uh, with the characters, with, you know, themes and whatnot, and just, you know, overall enjoyment and, uh, what we expect, what we don't expect. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I have no, I, yeah, this will be, I know this, nothing about it, so this is gonna be, uh, Yeah, this will be, this will be Goose's first time viewing Nausicaa. Uh, you've seen a few Ghibli movies, right? Yeah, I've, I've seen, uh, I've seen Miyazaki's stuff. Uh, I really like his Content Cop series. It's pretty good. <laughs> Um, he's always dissing that bad unboxing is, is pretty interesting um, <laughs> but you know no, I, I like I like uh, Ghibli you're the same guy <laughs> <laughs> yeah no it's, it's all the same thing so, totally. it's all the same thing same drama but yeah so you know like he um, we actually recently went to watch uh, uh, Howl's Moving Castle yeah and uh we were saying that it, it was a, it was an okay movie. It, it it was it was fun overall. It was it was good. But yeah, no, it was a good movie. It was entertaining. But it was just I think it was kind of confused with itself, like because it it, I mean like with little point like little details that obviously didn't matter overall, but like they just yeah. kind of made things a little, uh, just conf- confusing and and just overall um, uh, just not as powerful. Yeah, yeah. I feel like it was very um, it was very upfront about what it was so i think a lot of ghibli movies are very um they're like their world first story second yeah so like he'll develop a world and he'll throw some kind of vague characters and most of them are pretty basic archetypes um but it's always about the world that they inhabit and it's about like i mean miyazaki is really focused on nature no, and yeah, so that, that's loves... that's his biggest thing. Yeah, yeah. and like so, I think, and... I think that kind of comes from just Japan, though. I think Japan's like very uh, outspoken with its like environmentalism. It's it it's part of their culture, really. Like combining their, you know, sort of their um, religious aspects with their nature, with their naturalist aspects, and and their work ethic, and it, it's all it's all <laughs> this like perfect balance. And I think he, I'm sure it derives from. I also think he has another thing that he has in a lot of his movies are like these criticisms against war, and I think typically yeah. like a lot of references to like World War Two, in particular. Yeah, which is uh, yeah, I think yeah. modern modern Japan is very. It's so funny to think that Japan was once like a like an empire. Yeah, right. Considering what they are now, I don't know. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> such a it's such a drastic it's such a stark change. contrast. Yeah, but um. But anyway, so like, yeah, Miyazaki has this really uh, strong focus on nature, and so like that shows through all of his movies. But I feel like in this one, it was very, um, it was a little less careful about making sure, about making its characters sort of believable. I think that it was a great movie because um, the environment was really cool. It had some really cool magic stuff and all that. It drew you in. Um, it was a it was an enchanting world yeah. but it wasn't necessarily what it was saying that was very powerful like yeah. it, it was more so just being wondered like in wonderment of what we were seeing and the yeah. uh the romantic uh subplot there is also something it's something that i co- consistently fall prey to yeah so like whatever oh, t- there's <laughs> yeah i'm the same i and 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 the way miyazaki i think kind of um the way he uh sort of portrays romance between characters is very like very touching and very uh subtle in a, in a lot of ways like he's not very upfront with it i think like he, i mean he he might like with a lot of characters he'll like he'll make very heavy implications with like you know nervous behavior but like in movies like princess mononoke there's a ro- you can tell that there's a romance but he never he never blatantly like yeah. says it like he just suggests it and even in the end it's not very conclusive but it's kind of nice the way they do it like which is and, why... and, and it seems it feels natural too like because it's not so easy to like uh it's not so easy to give your feelings to somebody i think and i think he kind of gives that shyness in that's actually movies. why yeah. um after the movie i said something like uh i kind of thought that she wasn't going to turn back into a young girl again right i thought she was just gonna stay old 
And I was surprised that he that it sort of went the um, typical romance uh, way. Just because my exposure to Miyazaki, the movies that I have seen from Ghibli, there have been romantic implication, but there's never been overt romance. I haven't seen... That's the first movie I've seen where there's, oh, wow, there's the climactic kiss. Oh, <laughs> okay. I really wasn't expecting it. I thought the end was going to be a virtue of like, you know, just because you're old doesn't mean you're weak. Yeah. Just because, you know, physical appearance uh, means nothing compared to internal Beauty whatever, or resilience yeah, or like... whatever. Like your strength isn't limited by your outside quality. It's like, it's like superficiality. Exactly. Though, yeah, so like... I thought that was where it was going to go. And I'm like, oh, wh- what? She's a girl again? Well, that, yeah, that, that's that's where it's sort of the, the context of like the of how the world worked kind of confused us like it was like like it was like was it just an illusion could only certain people see that she was young and an old woman or like or maybe was it did everybody see it and that's what was not very clear but that wasn't even like like i would even say that like uh like the biggest thing i think that howl's moving castle was trying to suggest was this yeah like um uh this (laughs) i guess you you were suggesting this the other day that like they they do have these theme like the characters are kind of representative yeah. of themes where like um where and you know I'll even let you take the reins because they they were your thoughts so. yeah so it, like Howl is the embodiment of immaturity almost like a Peter Pan character if Peter Pan was a little bit more dark so if if Peter Pan had that aspect of you know if Peter Pan confronted a yeah. little bit more existentially why he felt that way. But yeah, so like the resistance uh, to change, immaturity, um, Sophie, is that her name? Yeah, it's so, Sophie. Boom, yeah. I got it. It was <laughs> the first time I remembered her name. She was kind of bland. Um, yeah, so, nah, yeah, yeah. Sophie is the, like, um, the, the, it's, again, they're kind of archetypes. So like Sophie's the, you know, the girl who grew up too fast, the person who was forced to, become an adult so she's like the the embodiment of maturity of and even like you see it when she's turned into an old woman and she has the reaction of like holy shit what's going on (laughs) and then she just like she goes to bed wakes up and she's like all right i guess this is life now and then she just picks up with it and we see how hal confronts that same feeling of like right he's having that like I'm not beautiful anymore. You fucked up my hair. I was I was beautiful. And it's interesting. And he it's inter- goes in he's like this yeah. meltdown over it. And, yeah, and, and it's kind of interesting that the guy with like very flamboyant magic, like he's like like the guy who's like all like like sort of mysterious, wonderful, kind of like ha- yeah. this kind of uh <laughs> sort of a suave kind of personality it's interesting that the magical guy is sort of the uh, the naive one that like yeah. sort of it's like it's almost like this kind of um oh my god i just realized he's willy wonka you right anyway. yeah like but but it's it's like you know a lot you would attribute magic to like people who are very wise and like intelligent like yeah. like wizards but in in a way his magic is kind of is also kind of uh personified by his character like it's very uh, it's very childish too. His magic, yeah. You it, know, it, it's sort of a way to deny reality in a, in, a, in 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 in. Yeah, and then they yeah. tied that in with like, I don't know. I actually, one of the only things I liked about the ending, yeah. <laughs> which the ending was really rushed. <laughs> that, yeah, that was very. Uh... <laughs> the only one of the only things I liked about it was that they said, you know, Hal's heart was a, still a child's heart because it was taken from him when he was a child. Right, so so his heart didn't have time to develop and, and exactly. grow. Exactly, and it's yeah. almost as it if like, like, de- like as if like the demon was representative of like it was less about an actual demon possessing him and more like this demon of like growing up. This yeah, demon of, yeah, like it, like yeah. this burden of having to like actually you know, change and having to mature and everything like that. And I feel like it's almost as though like his mindset had never advanced past that either. Like he seemed like a very sort of about to hit puberty character, like somebody who doesn't want to go through any sort of change. Doesn't want to, you know, typical coming of age main character. That's the way I think he's like, you know, now tough from fully Cooley. It's uh, yeah. Sort of shit. I'm hesitant to make this comparison, but Shinji from Ava, like they're (laughs) very like that. That's sort of a, it's an archetype, but anyway, like, and then you have the character, you have the witch of the waste, who is um i you could say she's greed 
but she's sort of a, a mirror image of Howl in a lot of ways where she's what Howl would have become. Yeah, yeah. So she is like, she's Howl at like, you know, a later stage basically where she has used magic to deny everything she hated about herself to make herself yeah more beautiful yeah i that still shocking to me that whatever that man. was like yeah. that was so insulting when they finally realized like what she really looked like and how she was using magic to look like a ball of play-doh <laughs> and it's like that is so insulting that's like saying plastic surgery can't fix you that's like <laughs> like only god can fix this mistake and you can't <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> like basically, that's what it was. Yeah, it's like yeah. mag- There's no amount of magic that will fix you. <laughs> you will forever be like this. That oh was so god. funny to me. <laughs> it was so fucked. But anyway, no, yeah, like it. So I, I like what Miyazaki was trying with the movie. Like, like you can tell that there. That I think you'll notice in a lot. Like actually, to touch on a point earlier, you were saying. Um, I think we're in a lot of these movies you're about to see. Yeah. There's a lot of this coming of age kind of uh, moral and and this kind of um, uh, a lot of the characters you'll also notice are very are are mostly uh, more than, or more often than not you'll see are, are female and in and, and 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 I think that kind of attributes to a lot of Miyazaki's kind of like. Um, uh, I mean, you'll see in interviews, like he. I mean, when when they interviewed him for uh, Spirited Away, they they uh, he said, you know, uh, little girls are kind of my favorite uh, people because they, um, they're just much sweeter and kind of more, uh, I guess, imaginative than boys are. I'm not really sure what that meant, but like I think he he's saying that they have this kind of like naivete and kind of innocence to them that. That yeah. that makes a good character when they become stronger. And, I have to say that yeah. that is a testament to how beloved Miyazaki is because I can't think of a single other person who can say "little girls are my favorite" <laughs> and who could escape that unscathed. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, just move on. Just go on. I was really trying not to touch <laughs> there. But I know. Dude, I, I, but I, I think waiting. it's actually important yeah, yeah. because Miyazaki is such a just beloved person in general and is seen as like this. I mean, he's like kind of a nasty old man in real life, but no, like, he, he's a, he's very bitter. But like you can, but you can tell that like he has this kind of um, very, uh, I guess, very wide love for for life and things in it. But he doesn't very he doesn't really represent it within himself very often. I, I think that's well, why he goes to art to really so so he's like yeah, guys, probably. listen, I'm not an asshole. Trust me, <laughs> please, please, boss. <laughs> See here, here, like here's this. a beautiful movie. Just, just, just stop. stop. I'm not, I'm not horrible. <laughs> but um, when I say I like little girls, I don't mean it like that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah, yeah. So you'll, you'll see in a lot of these movies, there's coming of age, like yeah. uh, this. Um, a lot of female characters, a lot of very strong female. Characters. You'll even notice that, like, he, he, he'll have scenes where, like, they, they really do these very, like, um, it's like. It's not. It's not that because they're not being girlish that, that that's what makes them a stronger character. It's actually, in fact, that it the actions aren't. It's not like the actions are making them masculine per se, but it's that they are doing things that are that are useful and kind of uh, emboldening their their personalities and, and kind of their, their sort of um just their character. They're just becoming yeah. stronger characters through development. Well, and, that's and, like yeah. I think that and, and losing that that sort of like stereotypical femininity is not necessarily his perception of losing femininity. Exactly. In, in a way, it's kind of defining the femininity through the through those actions. Yeah, because yeah. that's like the so like Sophie was never. I don't think Sophie. Um, I would say that Sophie was a strong female character in that she had a lot of conviction. She was stubborn in a lot of ways, which I found very endearing. Um, but she was never uh, like I, I don't know. I feel like in the beginning they tried to paint her as like almost a tomboy. Like she was plain, and it's like, oh, well, that was I don't really see that. Like she always she was a feminine. 
person. She wasn't violent. She never kicked the shit out of anybody. Right, yes. Yeah. So like, like, she never... She, and like, she, even she, in the movie, stuck to yeah. very traditionally what I would... I mean, I think the West would call, like, traditional, like, uh, female, like, gender roles, if you will. Like, she... I mean, it's like, she goes into the castle and she cleans. And right, she would, yeah, like, she would yeah. make hats. Like, she was... But it, it wasn't so much that it was, like, the, the like, being... I think I think it was like I mean in the context of the movie, it was obviously because like Howell wasn't doing anything with the castle and she was just like what the fuck is this exactly and, and she's just like I gotta clean this up because <laughs> any normal fucking human being would clean this up <laughs> but, see, but that's but like what it is yeah 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 but but like it but I think yeah like with the West perception it would probably look like oh she's cleaning. Because she's well, a woman. Wow. So here's the thing. But it's like, but no, was, she like so she's just she's just responsible. Where man. I was going like, with yeah, this yeah, is yeah, like yeah. it's yeah, she's yeah, yeah. doing this like yeah, it's, it's considered traditionally yeah, a yeah. feminine thing, but she's not doing it because it's a feminine thing. Yeah. She's yeah, doing yeah. it because it's useful. She's doing it because that's what you do. And yeah. like that was the thing that I like I don't know, like there was a that's part of what makes her such a uh, an endearing character. Like I said, is that like she's very rational, she's very down to earth in a lot of ways. Like even like from the beginning to the end, she was always like she was the most rational person in the movie. <laughs> Everybody yeah. else was just like, oh, we're gonna fight a war because I don't know. <laughs> and she's and just like. And then the war ends because, oh, look, Hal fell in love. All right, I guess. Because Turniped, you know. But, like, <laughs> what the fuck was that? I was so mad at that. I just wanted him to stay as, like, a, a little, like, ah, he's a goofy guy. Look, he follows yeah. us around. <laughs> he's just like, no, I'm the most important person in the world. I feel Get so... the fuck out of here. Well, like, I, I, I feel so bad for him. I feel so bad for him because, like, throughout the movie, he helps Sophie so much. Like, I like, know, and like they kind of shit on him like, a little like, bit. Like he, like, he gives her a cane, and he gives her an umbrella when she's crying, yeah. and Hal's being an asshole. Oh, he, he, like, he even stops the fucking castle from falling oh, down a cliff exactly like he, he like, like he is the mvp of that movie yeah you said it you're yeah, like turnip head he's MVP. the fucking mvp and then howl gets the girl and it's like why i know it's like but that was the cruelest like, thing in the movie that was like the most like nice guys never finish like oh my god or, like, you're right or whatever. It's like, that was like the most like friend zone yeah, if yeah there yeah. is such a thing <laughs> yeah. if there is such a thing as the friend zone holy shit he embodies it yeah but like, like but he was like okay with it like I know that yeah, was like, so <laughs> weird, and like... that was ultimately that was my biggest. It Im that moment embodied my issues with the movie. It was a hasty wrap up to uh, a kind of hasty throwing everything together in the first place. Like the way that there weren't any real rules to how anything operated. And that's important in a fantasy anything. Right, yeah, like, you never want to get wrapped up in the details of a magic because, like, you know, it's magic. But, like, but obviously yeah, you want you want to kind of, you know what, you do want to have that magic work to, like... Consistency. Yeah, like, consistency, but as well as, like, backing, you even, like, backing up a lot of the, uh, the narrative. Because sometimes a lot of um, actions and just, you know... Um, and uh, like a lot of actions and a lot of the visuals in the movie often help push the the themes and 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 the and yeah what's being trying to set what's trying to be set across and it and it sounds like in the movie like uh, some of that magic even like pointed towards like love where like love is always going to solve your problems love is going to yeah. stop war which was kind of ham fisted but that's kind of what they were going yeah. after well yeah. you know well because I'm okay with romantic ideas like that yeah I'm okay with uh, a kind of a cheese ball, uh, love trumps hate, that sort of thing. But you want it, you want it to ha be like kind of realistic. I just want yeah. it to have rules. Yeah. And yeah. I know I sound like a fucking asshole, but <laughs> like the it really <laughs> it kind of genuinely bothered me. No. Yeah. When like everything wraps up in like I swear to God, there's all this build up, and there's a full arc of the movie, right? So there's a, a you know right the they're beginning, get, they're rising action, like, yeah. climax. And then it starts to fall, and then like everything, like oh look, it's perfect. Everything works out. Oh no, yeah, like, like if what? you were, if, if if you were to look at a graph, like it would reach the climax, but instead of like 
like going like neatly down a slope it just drops i like, know yeah, like yeah it's just it's like holy shit and that's like yeah, yeah. the last five minutes of the movie but it's like and and like the climax it's also like it's like you said that there, there was a lot of build-up you had that that madam solomon she's like she's like she's she's kind of instigating this war and yeah and and she you know she's got something against howl and and how for some reason doesn't go to magic school anymore? I don't know. So so whatever. So anyway, so um, uh, so you you have the, you have the and you know they're getting bombed in the in the fucking city. They're getting bombed. <laughs> I know. They they there's the, like think about the transition here. They're getting bombed. Sophie teleports them from the castle or whatever. He, she's like, we gotta save Hal, and then you know they fall down the cliff or whatever, and then Hal gets found after she goes to the past comes back to the future how finds her they go on the walking castle everything's okay the end it's like what it's like the, the the bombing almost didn't seem like it was like an important plot point at that point it, it, like it was just like it was like oh shit the war just came to the town that it was away oh, from yeah, and now it's the, just over it's like well what? that was another th- that was like kind it of just, another nail in the coffin where it's like yeah. that epitomizes how none of the Okay, no, they none, none of the conflict is like any. This is really important. It's all. Yeah, it's, it's just. Like, it's uh, just to con- thematically back the movie. Yeah. It's yeah. only they only show the bombing when somebody's upset. They only show the bombing when Hal has a thing, and he's like, uh, uh, and he fucking has some like emo moment where he has to yeah, go yeah. and and cry himself to sleep to Blink One Eighty Two. That's the <laughs> only time they show the bombing. Like it, it's just like he goes into the blackness. And like he like soars out there on his bird wings. I almost and like goes out, like it, it, like it's. I think I think the war in that movie was supposed to represent some kind of like inner turmoil of how because you know look at it. He's going through a door. He's going into a dark phase in his life. Yeah. He's, the war is like his own demons that he's fighting, but he can't cure it. He's becoming a demon because of it. Like it. It's a lot of this. Like it's like. He's shutting. The other thing is, he says he, no one's allowed to go in there. Kind of like an angry teenager yeah. who's not supposed to go into the like room. It's like it's his mess. It yeah. almost feels like he's like, ah, it's my. Thing. Yeah, it's like it's like don't come in my room, mom. And it's exactly. just like yeah, and, and like you know, he he, it's dark. It's it's gloomy. It's creepy. It's kind of like what you're saying. It's pu- it's like puberty. When you're going through puberty, it's a very kind of yeah. It's a very per. <laughs> it's it's not actually dark, but it's very personally dark. Yeah. And like. It's and, a weird time. Yeah. That's the whole thing. But, like, that's the... Like, I just... To me, it was... And yeah. the, the other thing that irked me is, like, they had this thing where it's like, oh, look, now they're bombing her hometown. And it's like... what? Like, Shit. me watching what the about, movie... Like, what happened to her sister and my mom? Thought, like, what hap- my what exact thought was, like, like, well, I guess the movie doesn't give a shit. Because they haven't show they showed her mom twice. Yeah, in the entire movie, they only showed her sister once. She didn't even come back. Yeah, like like it's what fu- is like, she dead? Yeah, I know, right? Like, Does she, she care? Does Sophie yeah, give a shit? Right? I don't think so. Because Exa- like, they don't yeah, show like, like the, the sister, you would have to presume she's, I mean, alive in a way because everything wraps I up nicely. Guess. But like, but the pro- but in a way, you can't think that way because they never show her well, after because they the show conclusion. that the town is evacuating. Well, okay. Well, actually, I, when they're flying away, I think I don't know if they show the town, but I think it's kind of assumed that like what they're flying over is the town rebuilt. You know, like at the very end of the movie. Oh, yeah, maybe. I don't fuck. I, it, you know what? It's but, so sloppy. But that, that's, done. that's the I, problem. I like, you don't know. The thing is, like, it's funny because her sister, even though she's a very different person from Sophie, she, you know, different from her mother in a way, the, the sister had this, like, very kind of there was like a tender connection in the beginning of the movie and you thought that like she she might have you know provided yeah. a, a like sort of a i don't know a, a plot like, or i she, thought she, she would probably, come back yeah definitely. like you think she'd come back but like she she just didn't she, she never showed never up did. and they yeah. threw her mom back into the Instead, story yeah. just to remind you that she has a mom that's yeah. it. That no, was yeah, the like, only it, thing. It, it would, served no real purpose. I, I would even say, like, it would, it would have been better if it was the sister that showed up. Like, yeah, definitely. Yeah, because it, it the mom yeah. is sort of expressed to be... Like, okay, she, the impression she, she, I yeah, got was that yeah. she was vain. 
She's yeah. very self-absorbed. Yeah. And when you see her for the second time, she's like, Sophie, oh, wow, nice to see you again. You're old. Hey, I'm going to go fuck my new <laughs> husband. See you later. It's like, wait, I'm, how long has she been gone for? Right, yeah. Like, I mean, I know that. Or, or like, do you really like this dingy place? Well, see ya. It's just like, what? <laughs> well, that's the thing. Like, yeah, yeah. I, the movie sort of expresses that they're adults, sort of. They're yeah. young adults. So I get that she wouldn't, like, shit a brick if she yeah. was gone for a few days. But it's implied that she's gone for months. Yeah, no, yeah, like, she's for there long, for a yeah. while. And it's like her mom's like, oh, hey, good to see you again. Uh, see you later, I guess. I, uh, yeah, the time, oh, frame, the, the, the time frame is kind of expressed strangely. Like, you, it feels like when you watch the movie, like, you get the feeling only, like, a couple days went by but like that's because you but, only but, see how like six times but the yeah right but like but but when you but when you like but then when you like sort of i guess extrapolate off of how the characters are acting and like changing you can tell like you said like months are going by in this movie yeah. but it's not very well expressed i don't know so i mean i guess like the, the war was another like measure stick like oh this war is long and, yeah i don't know so but the, actually going back to the mom um it's it's um yeah you were yeah yeah she's very vain kind of self-absorbed yeah i sort of thought that it was like it, it was a way to to set herself I, I was telling you this in the message messenger where like it was kind of i feel like it was a way to really emphasize sophie how she kind of like yeah so give to, her like a, yeah. it's it's to add yeah. contrast yeah to show like look how mature she is and i feel like a it's unnecessary because you yeah. have other characters to do that this this might be a stretch and but why like, the mom yeah her sister is the same way yeah her mom and her sister are analogous to each other in regards to their themes yeah. that represent them so yeah, her yeah. sister is shown to be sort of full of life she has a, a you know a regular job. She's like but, a bartender but, but, or something, right? Well, she, I, I think she's like a dancer. I don't a know, waitress kind of, or something. Or waitress? No, maybe she's a waitress. I mean, yeah, she so. wasn't like a. You're making her out like <laughs> she was just like nipple tassels on and shit. She was. Oh no, I, no, I thought I thought she was just like some like you know like dancer on like a stage or something. But like, uh, but like, um, I'm remembering it wrong. I don't know. I, I don't really remember to be honest because she was only once Shut in the movie. Once. And it like, was in the yeah. beginning and the most boring part of the movie. And I've seen this movie several times and it's like, I've, I don't remember the sister very <laughs> yeah. well. But anyway, so like, but I, th I think from, like the, the mom is even more vain in comparison because you can tell that the sister, like she really co is concerned for Sophie that she, you know, that she's stuck in this, is this very sort of isolated drab life like from her perception at least you know she can she you can tell that she cares for her sister's well-being and she says you know you have to live for yourself sophie which is kind of you know it's a little um it sounds kind of harsh to say but you, you do she she all she's trying to do is motivate sophie to become kind of well it's also uh, more 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 um I, I would say just a little more um what's the word like She's trying to encourage Sophie to get a more, um, I don't know, definitive purpose. She's trying. She's trying to. She's trying to urge her to kind of like search there, for things, but not not specifically. Obviously, you just yeah. reminded me of a thought that I had, which was a little bit dark because there is sort of like I don't know if this was intended by the movie. I doubt it was. Yeah. But um, when okay, I'm gonna like. When a kid has a parent who's sort of, like, irresponsible, the kid will become more responsible because it has to be. Yeah. So, it for, like, you've heard, I guarantee you've heard, like, you know, the sort of, it's almost an adage at this point of, like, you know, a kid who was raised by a single parent is forced to become an adult faster. Yeah. Or a kid who was raised in a poorer environment is forced to grow up faster than other kids. Sure. Because it's a harsher reality. There's not a lot of room. There's no where time you can to just, screw yeah, around. Yeah. Exactly. So, so you you get the idea of that where like her father died. She's taking over. It's sort of revealed that she's the only one who takes it seriously. The yeah. hat shop, which was her father's, she's bearing that. Hell, burden. her mom remarried somebody exactly. with like with this like almost like outspoken Don't vigor. Don't give a shit. Like, yeah, like like yeah. doesn't mention her mom. I think her mom mentioned it once in the beginning of like, oh, you're going to stay in your father's dingy old hat shop forever, blah, 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 blah. Wow. And that yeah. whole thing. And it's like when she's, when she's telling Sophie, like, you have to live for yourself, blah, blah, blah. It's like, to me, 
That is incredibly shitty because the reason why Sophie is the way she is is because you couldn't stop living for yourself. Yeah. You couldn't stop yeah. for a second and it's live very for ironic. someone yeah. other than yourself. Like, I, I feel like her intention was good, but obviously it, it just with the circumstances that they were it, it comes off as very vain and kind of exactly yeah, and so, even yeah. the reason why her younger sister can act the way she does is because sophie I, i'm they don't directly say this yeah but having known people who've been in similar situations like when you have somebody who like again like single parent and that parent is just like they have their head up their ass and they don't yeah. know what they're doing a lot of times like you like a kid is forced to raise their younger sibling basically yeah and so yeah. it's implied that, like sophie's the older sister mm. and like she was probably the only responsible figure in this in the little sister's life sure yeah and that's why she had the freedom to be able to hell like I, like i'm sure this hat shop is like where some of the income probably comes from yeah. it's not just for fun i'm sure like exactly like, and yeah. so it's like you know there's a darker side of this yeah and it's like but it's not very fleshed out well because you know nothing about the dad and you know nothing about their relationship exactly. and why that's important so it's just this hat shop that she fucks around in for some reason <laughs> and like and 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 occasionally you don't hat... even know the name of the goddamn hat shop no we don't like it's just it's <laughs> all like, that's on the sure... door is just hatter no no yeah you're you're right yeah it's just called the hatter and and even the fuck i mean fuck the, come on the, i mean fuck the, the 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 witch says it herself you run this tacky hat shop i don't blame her oh, yeah, like she says, when like, she says yeah, tacky like, eight times of, in one sentence yeah it's well it's it, but it, but it's like it's like i don't blame you of course it's tacky we have like no emotion <laughs> we have no emotional exactly. attachment to this fucking hat shop it's yeah. just there it's so just, it's like it's a plot device. So it's like I mean I know it's supposed to make us feel like wow you really said that about her hat shop but it's like no it's like we really there's nothing there's nothing that exudes importance or any sort of like character yeah. for, to so there's isn't nothing that, that that's, that, that, there's that's a, oddly funny isn't it yeah because like, like that's a line that's supposed to be like oh look the witch of the waste she's a piece of shit you should hate her it's but like, it's like i guess you're right. i yeah, empathize like, with her a yeah, little like, bit because like, i don't know why i should care about this <laughs> yeah like, it's like it's, <laughs> you're right it is boring what is this but it's what like, this about Where yeah it's like going? it's like you know it's important to sophie but it's like why why like exactly. it's like because her dad who's her dad because why dad is, like, is like, dad reason what what if what if dad is bad <laughs> like Stop it. yeah it's like <laughs> i know that rhyme might not have been unintentional i will give you the benefit of the doubt but if you cross the line one more time i'm calling the police <laughs> if we cross the streams the fucking portal will open no but like it's and, and so actually one one last point to touch upon the mom is, is that um we were talking. Uh, this might be a bit of a stretch, I think, but I, I think that there is some kind of validity to this, where the, the vanity and the and the and the self absorption come kind of. I feel like it's a reference to kind of like everyday ordinary people. Like maybe yeah. this is kind of Miyazaki's criticism of how he views the public. This very kind of materialistic and very kind of, um, you know, very, very ignorant and kind of very like uh, you know. Uh, because because Miyazaki is a very like um how, how to describe it not f like I wouldn't I don't want to say fiery but like like he's very upfront with what he want thinks and yeah. says he's very uh candid there we go he's very candid and um and and so like I feel like uh, I wonder if the if the mom is kind of a, is a is a, rep a representation of like his image of the public this very kind of like maybe generic view like so oh and actually the mom that also we also noticed that there was like a, a really damaging point in the narrative where it's like so Sullivan this was this was you, you no pointed yeah this out. I had nothing to I, do I, I never yeah. thought I never thought about this before but it was so in the movie you know after they escape Madame Solomon who is this like uh, queen sorcerer kind of like a like a teacher almost of, yeah. of, of like of the king she's like the fucking wife or something we don't even know like what it's the relationship not explained. is yeah. it's all explained is that she's some kind somehow she's like royalty yeah, yeah. she's the most powerful wizard yeah and like yeah, yeah sorceress she's a grand sorceress whatever whatever that means but she's she's pursuing howl because you know he he's being possessed by a demon and she's like we got to stop you and we're not going to stop the war so fuck you and we're going to kill you yeah well they escape and because solomon even though she's the most powerful was in the world she can't fucking stop that old woman and a, a 
a, just can't do anything a, about it. An obnoxious <laughs> brat. And so it's like, uh, and so, but like the, uh, so, you know, so, so she tracks, she wants to track them and, uh, and Sophie's mom plays the part in it where she plants like a bag in the, in Hal's ca- house and in the bag, there's something called a peeping worm, as they say in the in, which sounds like a yeah, peeping tom, but it's like whatever. I don't know. So maybe it's some Japanese translation, but like so, peeping worm and the witch, the, the witch of the waste, w- being decrepit as she is, uh, she like finds the worm and she's like, oh, a peeping worm. Is this the best you can do, Solomon? And she feeds it to Calcifer, destroying the worm, presumably yeah. r- ridding Solomon of any eyes on the the yeah. house. She couldn't possibly discern what's happening there well at the end of the movie you find out that the dog can communicate with solomon <laughs> through a fucking crystal I ball know. it was so ridiculous and it's, it's like, like it's like what? what was the point of the fucking peeping worm Why? Then? so like solomon can just keep eyes and again, on anything I think it's this like was more of a it was it served two purposes which is to a bring her mom back into the goddamn movie yeah because otherwise her mom I mean, wouldn't I, like, know where she was or what she looked like i get like i guess it wasn't that like big of a deal <laughs> but like it, it it's like it's just such a waste of like presentation i think like it's just i don't know so and it also served i think um as a way to illustrate um well because like okay when the when her mom gets like back in the carriage thing she's like all right i did it now take me back to my husband yeah and it's like i think it illustrates a how little her mom kind of gives a shit and how like she's but at the, well, well well but at the same time i mean she does kind of she does kind of she show, expresses like, remorse like she, like she does show guilt of like uh, of doing this to Sophie but it's like it's like as if to imply that she has some other character under all that vanity exactly but it's <laughs> like but it's like it's really like who gives a shit like yeah. we, we never see her again it's like yeah. even when the city gets bombed we I don't know see it's her never again. you don't even see like, them yeah. like, like walking <laughs> out of the city on a carriage. Yeah. Or anything like that. They don't have that cliche scene where it's yeah. like you see them on the back of a wagon, her and her, her mom and her sister, like clutching each other as yeah, the flames yeah. go or anything. There's nothing. You don't even see anybody <laughs> leave the city. Hell, like, it's implied you, you that people you, like, are <laughs> evacuating. You see people are leaving, yeah, sort of. Yeah. But there's no like, there's no real grandiose presentation like you see in most movies. When something like that happens, the whole point is to show like, look at these characters. They are in duress. Look also, at the yeah. characters in the world no, we've yeah. set up and now watch it be destroyed. And it's like, there really isn't. It's just a plot device. That's it. Like, end of yeah, thing. There's like, nothing like, else. I, the, I, uh. the, other, the other thing that kind of confused me was the... Um, was the way like the the time system worked like like she was able to go to Howell's past through that like mysterious I don't door. even want to talk about that like like I like I get I don't it. like <laughs> well I mean I get it. it's like ooh magic ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> but like it, but it's like why that door why is it the door that they exit and through? are we establishing that time but, travel is a thing but like but like if you think <laughs> what if you think about it it do, it kind of breaks the war down doesn't it because it's like oh. he goes through the black door and that takes him to the war right. Well, how come when she goes through the black door, it takes him, it takes her to his past? It kind of implies that this door was is that the is, black door she went through. Yeah, she. It's the same door. I thought that was the flower world thing. No, because you can you can switch the. You can, I, no, I thought she went to the. It, it's oh. it's it's the same plane, but it's not the same plane of existence. Like it's the same area that Howell grew up in, but it's in the past. It's like through the different I guess. door. Yeah. So but like she it's was, not. But I, the other door, like where the and flowers, she was able to interact with him. No, yeah, like yeah, yeah, like like the flowers, for example, like th- when she first went through it, that was like contemporary to their time period. But then when, then when she goes through alone through the black door, it goes to his like past. I, so. What's so what's confusing about that is it kind of it literally implies that that door is the amalgamation of Howell's like pain. So that means the war is also just this fabrication exactly. of Howell's like mind. But it but it's also inconsistent it's because there's actually out. a war happening. So yeah, it's well, like that's the, but that's so it's again, like it embodies like yeah. the whole thing of like this was it's not actually about the plot. Don't pay attention to the plot. Look at the pretty lights. Yeah, yeah. I feel like that's the and like again. By no means, I liked the movie, and I even think it's a good movie. It's funny, like we, we we're just like we're, we're complaining we're about ragging how, like, on it really hard. We're ragging on it, but it, I think it's important that we do because it, well, this is it's... this is from a very good, I think, like director and creator yeah. in general. So it's just kind of weird how like 
just I don't know. I guess it, it, it I think it's paramount because a lot of the movies that he creates are are not usually storyboarded first. I've seen in, in Well, this one was the first one that had CGI in it, right? No, I think Mononoke because um remember the uh the dark monster with like all the worms oh, on it? Oh yeah. That was one of the first movies that they actually implemented CGI. He was very like adamant against it, but like yeah, he hates it. it. it no, yeah, he, even to this day he hates it, but like he he uh, but I think he had, he had to, you know, you kind of have to cut corners with an animation studio and I think that was just the best way to like animate that. But it, it's funny cuz like he proves how, that he can do the same exact thing without CGI, so it's just like it's he he literally proves it and that's that's so funny to me. So but like they he has to make some kind of sacrifice. But anyway, yeah. sorry, I'm uh, uh tangent. So uh well, ah, damn it! What was the last thing I said? It was um. <sighs> Time travel. How that breaks. Oh. Okay, so the time travel. So it, actually, you know what? Uh, funny thing. Um, uh, I sort of think. Here's a theory. Yeah. I sort of think that Howell knew about Sophie in the in, from the beginning. Like, like, cause. Well, the way she like so he she calls she out. She tells him, "Find me," find and me, that's yeah, why yeah. He, find they me came in, into contact. Find yeah. me in the future. And, I figured and, yeah, that yeah, was yeah. canon. I figured that was like yeah, yeah, how yeah. It okay. worked. I, I, because I, I just wanted to make that clear. Because like I, I sort of felt like he, he had a suspicion that he knew yeah. about her previously, unbeknownst to her past self, and like. There's also this uh, implication so, that even when she's an old woman, he still knows who she is. Excuse, yeah. No, yeah. Like, like, there's no... No, yeah. Like, oh, well, because he's like a wizard and he can see also, past through nice, this bullshit. Nice burp. Yeah. You just ruined our podcast. Uh, we gotta start over. God yeah. fucking That's damn. it. Nuke it. Jeez, We're done. A, well, hey, but like, um, so... <laughs> Holy shit, how long? Jesus, fuck. Yeah, it was 40 minutes, but like, <laughs> it's fine. Uh, anyway. I got time. But Wait, like, hang on, hang on. One thing that actually bothered me... Who is Markle? Markle? The kid. Oh. The... They never once talk about the fucking kid. Where is he from? <laughs> Why is he there? They, they sort of. Who is he? I know. Like, they, they don't explain anything. They sort of. They, they, they imply that he's like this orphan that was like. I, I, okay. So like, like, they, the they, impl- don't, they, they don't directly say it. but The they, implication like, impl- is, yeah. Like, like, you're right. He doesn't have a family. Hal took him in much the in the war. same way that Sophie did. Probably this war that's been And going now he's on. an apprentice of yeah. Hal. But yeah. it's like they never once flesh out who the fuck they are. Like, there's no real relationship between Hal and the kid. It's all implicit. Nothing is really defined. It just, it, there's, it bothered me. Yeah, there's it no... It really bothered yeah. me. And it's like, what the it's, fuck? And it's kind of, it's, are they really not yeah. going to explain? They're not going to do a thing where they yeah. show how the kid showed up here or what the kid is fucking doing here. It's kind of... <sighs> I, I feel like he was there to kind of imply that Sophie's very motherly. So, like... She's a very like yeah. He's another plot device. Yeah, exactly. So like, it's because he has no yeah. character. You know that, right? Like he has no. He, there's almost no defining character. I feel like he, about he's him. almost there to sort of antagonize Sophie <laughs> a little bit in the like, beginning. Yeah, he yeah, serves like, as the threshold. Yeah. So it's like like oh. like she like he's he's like the he's kind of like the TSA of the house like like she's like they're trying to screen her to fit in Howl's moving castle but, but yeah and so he acts obnoxious hoping she'll leave but she doesn't so yeah, he's exactly. like I guess she's all right I guess she's dead. yeah like, like, also I'm surprised we have gone this far without talking about Calcifer <laughs> Calcifer and the fucking dog. The dog, the dog and Calcifer are the best characters. It was the best dub. As as much the best as dub. it's funny, like Sophie's, I, we feel I, like I, like even though Sophie's bland, she's I think the strongest character. But yeah. but Calcifer and the dog are the best <laughs> characters. They're, they're so fun. The fact that it's voiced by oh my by, god, the water. Like the fact that there was a fucking where it was like yeah. something where like he was about to go out. He's like. Sophie. Oh, Sophie. Sophie! Oh, Sophie! Please! Oh, Sophie! Please! Like, Sophie! Please! Don't I, let me fall! Don't, don't let me fall! fall. Please don't let me fall! Oh, oh my God! <laughs> that was the best. Why is Billy Crystal not in more anime? <laughs> I would if he he should have voiced Joey from Yu Gi Oh. <laughs> should have voiced him. Oh my, oh my god, it would have been amazing. It would have been amazing. Yugi, don't don't drop me. You fall. <laughs> Yugi, please don't send me to the shadow realm, Yugi. Yugi, I only got I don't know. Yugi, I only have monsters in my deck. Where are the spell cards? <laughs> I, I got a red ass black dragon, Yugi. I don't know what's going I'm on. I'm not actually from Brooklyn, Brooklyn, Yugi. Help me. I'm not actually from Brooklyn. I'm from Staten Island. <laughs> That's my shame. <laughs> That's my 
I'm just, I'm just, sta I'm just statting it's the joke. facts. It's a joke. Please stop. stop it. You know what? You know, I, I. So, like, okay. I gave you one more chance, Ivan. <laughs> one more chance. You just ruined it. I'm done. I'm done. But, uh, I'm terminating my contract. Yeah. I'm throwing away the millions of dollars you gave me for this. God, how could you do this? <laughs> my podcast, it's ruined. Ah. <laughs> now this isn't gonna air on Comedy Central now. How? This isn't gonna, yeah, Comedy Central, and the the internet, <laughs> Comedy Central, they're like the world's worst TV station now. Well, now that net, oh my now, god, well, like, well, now that like net neutrality is gonna get fucking busted. Oh, they're Comedy Central, they're, they're, they're gonna make their own Comedy oh. Central like package deal. Oh, where they get the, by the internet. And you'll just be able to get a full it'll like. Be, it'll be called instead of comedy. It'll just be called like Meme Central, and it's just really bad. No, it'll just be no. They'll just cut out the middleman, and they'll just go here. Here's have some cancer. <laughs> you cancer want some cancer? cancer? No, just cancer. Just cancer. It's just called cancer. Can't no can do, sir. Just like, <laughs> but like, uh, okay. That wow, oh that God. was amazing. That's how much we love Calcifer. I know. But, yeah. He saved everything about it. He was the savior. Yeah. He saved my soul. He brought me to into the arms of 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 of, of Jesus Christ. It May was amazing. all your bacon burn. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god I love, he needs like, to be more also Christian Bale was a surprisingly good voice actor yeah Christian Bale was how like, yeah. like that, that's so crazy that was interesting yeah. I was surprised that it, uh, you know I really shouldn't be I mean Ghibli is a I mean that's like the that is the, big company, the but biggest like, name in anime but, it, but it's say, like but I, I guess you never think about like West. I guess you never really think about like Hollywood actors being in anime like that's such a weird yeah. idea but especially like, like okay yeah. this was House Moving Castle came out in like 2004 right Something I think is oh four. Christian Bale was a huge yeah. actor at that point. That oh yeah, was like that American was like, Psycho that during... was like ninety nine, right? Yes, yeah, so that was and like then... during Dark Knight though. Dark Knight I think came out like that year. Yeah, yeah. So like I mean he did like top build cast, and even now Christian Bale is still a, a amazingly respected actor. Because if, if I'm not if actor. I'm if I, if I'm not mistaken, I don't think they hired him at first. I think he like. I think he volunteered to oh, really? be a part of the movie. That's and then, interesting. It, I could be mistaken, but I, I'm pretty sure he volunteered. And then Christian they're like, Bale's "Oh, British, sure." And Christian the, Bale's British. I I never knew that. I, thought I he, never knew that. I either. thought he was an American dude. Do we have it? Cer it certainly didn't come across in Howls. He sounded like a, an American dude. But like I I'm it, it, I'm pretty sure I've heard somewhere or read somewhere that that he volunteered for the movie because he really liked the idea. It's just too bad the idea dilapidated like the fucking castle itself. Like like <laughs> how I like to think that the castle is just the epitome of, of like it's just like it's just Billy Crystal's career. <laughs> No, but like I like to. I, no, no. I, no, think of it like this. Think of it like this. it's the perfect analogy. Yeah. The castle is the movie, and okay. Billy Crystal is 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 he's, holding it he's all. He's the up. glue that's holding yeah, it all. Yeah, together. yeah, yeah. Like, like, and and that's just the, like the human race. When, and when you take Billy Crystal out of the castle, it fucking falls apart. It just falls. <laughs> Literally in the movie, when you take Calcifer out of the the castle, it falls apart. That's just what's gonna happen when Billy Crystal dies. Yeah, nuclear yeah. war, <laughs> just Holocaust 2.0. Really, it's just, like it's all gonna go downhill. It's it's actually just, not Holocaust 2.0. The first Holocaust didn't happen. Yeah, but <laughs> oh my <it's>, god, <laughs> <laughs> so this is so awful, <laughs> so bad. <laughs> so, but like the I have you know, to be myself. Actually, I to. I, well, it's actually you know what you know what else actually. Um, <laughs> yeah. Well, like along with Calcifer, he also you know obviously he voiced uh, Mike. Uh, Wachowski from uh, Monsters Inc. So Did like, he really? Yeah, it's Wachowski. Or Wachowski. Oh, wait, no, wait, no, it's not. It's Wazowski. Wazowski. I got it confused go. with the Wachowskis. Oh, okay. Directed the Matrix. Oh, okay. No, <laughs> yes, but he he voiced Mike uh, Wazowski. So like, yeah. So just I, I don't know why. I for some, when I look at I'm like, watching you, Wazowski. <laughs> but I feel like always watching. <laughs> I always feel like Wazowski. I don't know why he just there's something about the character that also just looks like Calcifer total tangent but it's a, well it's a similar minimalistic yeah. design yeah just like because uh, i also found it interesting how they animated calcifer it's obviously cgi but it's like there's something about it. unless he fucking drew it himself that would be amazing but like uh it's the way they had like the eyes and the like mouth ripple as like he was talking like that, that yeah. that's like that was, was just cool. very impressive especially because yeah. like maybe we should talk about the visuals like or do you want to finish calcifer and the i don't dog? know to me the visuals yeah. were very stock ghibli Nothing stood out to me too far. I mean, like, Ghibli has a very 
Um, Miyazaki has a, a, an iconic character design. Well, yeah. Which leads to all of his characters looking the same. Yeah, they no, all that's, look the that's, same. that's definitely true. Which but is like, well, okay, okay, but I would I'll, say like things like the the castle, the environment. Like, oh yeah, yeah holy crap! I, yeah, d- like, well, I mean, the effects like that. That's that's amazing. To me, maybe yeah. it's because like I don't know. I I'm used to that from Ghibli, like the the super detailed backgrounds. No, is something yeah. that I'll notice. Like in when you're watching a regular anime or just for any animated show in existence, for the most part, it's like the background, the immediate background is like it's detailed it looks good and then as you fade into the further into the distance everything gets blurry yeah and there's not as much detail and you notice with ghibli where it's like every frame is a fucking painting yeah it's beautiful and like the amount of work that goes into that will always be lost on me because i don't think i'll ever be able to appreciate I, yeah i don't just I don't... somebody going through and making it I, fucking I, yeah i don't think people like uh, maybe i'm wrong but like i just feel like people are so absorbed by like the motions of the characters that they don't pay attention to some of those still frames like it's yeah. really impressive like like the way they showed the town and like all those individual buildings yes. and the and the ocean and the boats and like holy crap and like and there was a scene where they, like they they they're just outside like outside of the castle admiring nature and they're just looking at this mountain yeah. and I'm like this mountain is that like would put Bob Ross to shame. No, yeah, like, exactly. Like 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 if you were like an average viewer you'd just be like oh, okay, it's a mountain, but it's like that's not just a mountain. Someone Dude, just fucking drew it's that. Amazing. They they probably spent like weeks drawing that mountain yeah, and exactly. like, like just it, for that yeah. shot and then every yeah. other shot in the movie if you look inside the castle yeah just the amount of detail especially when it's dirty yeah the amount of detail oh my god yeah the cobwebs everything. and like the all the mess and it's so like, yeah. amazing it's it, like it's and like you think it'd be e- like it, it's actually difficult to draw a mess it's much easier to draw a neat exactly room. like that's ironic even the of. neat room yeah. like once the castle was sort of rejuvenated yeah like even then to be honest like everything was so amazing hell like watching at... the room transform yeah like, holy sh- the that way that awesome. like you yeah, like, got yeah. to see the shapes move and you got to see like when the wall heals yeah that was yeah. so fucking cool to me yeah. I, I, oh my god yeah and, but and just yeah I, like that's something that um i've noticed with like okay like i i prefer um anime movies over tv shows because movies have can do way more with their budget Sure. And so they don't have to take the same corner cuts that shows often do. And so, like, you can watch a movie and, like, you'll... Like, for me, I'll always remember the first time I saw Ghost in the Shell. Oh, Where I was like, oh, my God, it's so fluid, it's so beautiful. (laughs) And then, like, just dissecting all of these, like, little details in the shots. And just, like, just when they show the city, when they just show these sprawling buildings and all this stuff. And it's like, oh, my God, it's so gorgeous. And it's like, it's times a million with Ghibli. It's like these scenes in nature that are depicted so beautifully and it's every single shot. It's not like, okay, when you watch a show, like I remember I, for whatever reason, I remember bleach doing this. I remember where it's like, they would go to like the, um, the, what the soul society. Right. And like they would, it was the only arc of bleach. Fuck everyone who doesn't like it. (laughs) Um, or who likes anything else? I should say everybody likes the first arc of bleach. But um, and when then they go nobody to the will society, happens what happens afterwards? Like, like they <laughs> show the like the the environment, whatever, and they'll have like one panning shot that looks really good, and then that's it. Yeah. Like you get like one of those, and it's like in yeah. Ghibli, it's every shot. Ghibli loves establishing shots, which yeah. is awesome, and it's something that you see in real movies all the time because it's fuck, it's right here. Let's use it. But like t- to imagine somebody creating that. And the amount of work that it takes, yeah. the amount of work that goes into that, is insane. Yeah. And it's something, like I said, that it'll always be lost on me, the amount of work that actually goes into it. Yeah, and to add on that, like I think Ghibli movies do a really good job of, of um, utilizing silence. Like, the way they just... Yeah. Like, like there was this, there's like the scene where... Um, I mean, you, you, like, obviously the mountain and the scenery, like, it really... It's very captivating and very, like, um, just... Uh, you can tell that he has a, a deep admiration for nature and, and this world that, that we live in. And 
and and and how he reflects that in his art and 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 how you know how his team helps him out with that and so and and then there's the scene where like she she runs out crying because Hal's being a baby and she's yep. like she's just projecting and kind of saddened by her own burden and and she's just she's running out in the rain and right before she's crying you just all you really hear is the pitter pattering of yep. the rain but there's just this very ominous kind of like tension this like anxiety that like you can feel in the air and and it's it's very apparent and it's very it and then she starts crying after all that tension like breaks through you can feel the like the weight of what's going on and it and you can see it i don't know you just see it pouring out of the character that's when the character becomes very real like that that yeah. that, that that it's not just an image anymore like you you <clears throat> you personalize yourself with this character yeah, and I think and the then, silence allows you to be yeah. allows both the movie to feel more introspective, and, and yeah, also yeah. to just focus directly on the character. So, like in that scene that you're talking about, where it's like the rain, it's one of the like it's the shot is just on Sophie. Yeah, and it's the you hear the very rain, lonely, very lonely, and yeah. I think even before you like before Turnip Head comes in, it's just that it's like it feel and it's silent. It's except for the rain, and it's like it's a moment that you have with the character. Yeah, and it's it's important, and I feel like a lot of movies now will shy away from that, and a lot like I mean, first of all, the soundtrack of this movie was great, uh, but the soundtrack for a lot yeah. of movies are great now. Yeah, and like, but I feel like it's. People are afraid of silence because they're. Af- it's so easy for a scene to become awkward if there's no if there's no sound. Yeah. And but like the way it shows not only that they're not afraid to for that intimate moment, but they were smart enough to design the scene so it's not awkward. It mm. doesn't take too much time. It doesn't linger. It's just there to show you to to have a connection with that character and then for it to move on. Yeah, because it, yeah, it doesn't linger so, in it. Because sometimes it, it can be kind of hard to tell what a character is thinking just face value. Because like yeah. it, it's it's literally just you know images and sound, and you just kind of have to interpret it from what you see. But then like when you f- have that moment where you really like can put your head in, in inside this character, you f- you almost feel the very struggles and 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 feelings that they're feeling, and and it's. It's kind of cool because you you really only know your own thoughts and I don't know there's something very um, uh, just uh, I don't know just very profound about that. Also, uh, speaking of awkward, I've noticed. Uh, I mean, I, I I see why it was necessary, but like, remember when she first turns into the the, the grandma? Yeah. It was like. <laughs> I get that she was supposed to act like rattled and kind of like you know oh. like oh <laughs> I know what you're talking about but yeah but like she like I get it like no like it makes it totally makes sense and it's it should it should fit but I feel like that voice actress was like she was mumbling a little like too much and like she was and the way she and I, maybe this is just the way anime is animated but it makes like it sometimes makes English voices kind of sound a little like uh trite you know like it, it's like because the way she was like oh that's me isn't it like it, like oh god like like it just oh. didn't it didn't i don't know why like it, it like it, it's so weird like the, the 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 context the 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 script and the emotions all make sense for that scene but there's something there's that something doesn't tie it together. It's, it? There's something yeah. like it just doesn't. Which is, yeah. is unique in the movie because I feel yeah. like the voice actress actually did a really good job. I think she does a better job at like acting sarcastic and kind of like um, sassy, or, or or even just like uh, just like sassy the, grandma. J- just kind of like this very like condescending old woman who's just like <laughs> you better get that clean up whatever's other, in that room. Like I like funny. I liked that, but like whenever she acted like this like. Shock. Well, she was well, trying to be a little girl again. Yeah. Well, I, I, I guess, it, I guess it's a tough, it's a tough position because you have to act like you're a young girl in an old woman's body as an old voice actress, and that must be kind of. Actually, I don't know. Was she an old woman? Yeah, because there, there were two separate voices: one for the, oh, okay. the young Sophie, one for the old Sophie. And oh well, uh, yeah, I figured they were like different no, yeah. people, but I didn't know if she was actually an old woman. No, yeah, because like I saw her um image and it looked like it was like from the 50s so oh yeah so i it it has to be 
she has to be old. So like for the time, Ooh. but uh, maybe middle aged. But anyway, so um, so but it, like I, I get like how that's tough. You have to act like a little girl in an old woman's body yeah. as an old actress. That's pretty awkward. But like, it just uh, I don't know. It, it was a very noticeable kind of um, <laughs> uh, yeah. It thing. was. It was yeah. some. There was some awkwardness. You you, you could feel it in the theater. Everyone was like <laughs> kind of cringing what, what a little I think bit. Is, what I think but it, is but it works. It, is that yeah. um, Sophie makes a fantastic as a character? She makes a fantastic old woman. No, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's just she. Yeah, abs- absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> like I, and it was. It's supposed to be that way. It's supposed to be like, well, you know, she's always somebody who uh, was stronger than those around her. She was more responsible. She was, and she, I. They always say like the point that I never understood was that everybody's saying like, ah, you dress ugly, dress <laughs> more attractive. It's like, what? She doesn't dress ugly. No, it's, and they it's, keep trying yeah. to hammer that home. Like I mean, everybody's like, like, you need better clothes. It's like, what the fuck is wrong? Like, with like, she's wearing a dress. Like you act, you're acting like she's walking around in slacks. I mean, what yeah, the yeah, fuck? yeah. Like obviously she's not like she's not as flamboyant as like. Her what do you mom expect? You, you want her to be in a Playboy bunny costume the whole fucking just everybody? <laughs> well, like, 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 like obviously like she's not in those like floral decorations like her her family is, but like yeah, like she, she is in a dress. She's very feminine looking. It's not like she's. I don't get it. I I think maybe that. That just that just comes to the art style like it's supposed to be implied that she's wearing this kind of like and i like how her very mom... like very like like ordinary linen maybe even like sort of like what, what's the word like a, a a burlap dress i guess like, i don't know <laughs> it's not burlap well like <laughs> i don't know jesus christ but it's it's supposed to be implied she's not a that... syrian refugee no, she's I'm... a fucking regular person but i'm just saying for the time period like obviously like it's a much less like refined cloth <laughs> like she's wearing like... a like a <laughs> well like she's, she's not a she... goat skin well she's not cinderella obviously but i'm just saying like it's not a very like <laughs> What I think is funny It's not is a, that, as accentuated as the other characters. But I yeah. think it's funny how um, her mom and her sister like judge her sense of style. But they both have this very old woman haircut. Do you notice that? I think I think that's just time period. I guess. Yeah. But I think it's funny because yeah. it doesn't it mean, either it doesn't match up or, or whatever, but like it's just like they have that Q tip haircut. <laughs> Where it's like, yeah, oh, yeah. I'm an old woman. I don't remember how to drive anymore. And it's like, what? what? Yeah. Are they really going to criticize her? She just looks like a normal person her age. I, and they're just like I old guess, women dressing up I, I guess it's like just, for a burlesque show. I guess what the fuck? I guess it's just a different beautician standard in the uh, movie. But like, I guess. Beautician? Yeah, beautician. Is that a word? Yeah. It is? I, like, I mean, I think it's. Don't like fuck more, with me. It's more of like an occupation, but yeah. You can it, say like a, a beauty standard I would, is better. Beautician is like someone like like a makeup like artist or something, someone who makes beauty. The more you know, <laughs> the more you know. Yeah. But like, all right. Uh, all right, we've been talking for like an hour. No, yeah. So, but um, <laughs> this was supposed to be like, oh, your little pre movie thoughts. You yeah, have yeah. any have any things you want to get out? It's like <laughs> it's an hour later. Well, hey, you know, I um, imagine the SpongeBob guy with the time cards, like one hour later. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know any any oh the dog. The dog. Yeah, the dog. I, like not, I mean, the there's dog. not much to say about him, but he's, he's just, just he was funny. Yeah, I, like, just like, I want a dog like that. Yeah. <laughs> in a way, he kind of... I can't do the cough. In a way, he kind of reminds me of just, I don't know, when you when you look at any terrier, do they just have this, like, they do. really... They do, that look. They just have this, like, really <laughs> condescending... Not even condescending, no, no, no. They just have this very, like, intimate stare. There's just, like, it's, like, very That's adamant. I... It's, like, very adamant, and it's just, like... But th- this dog was just like so. He was fucking Terminator in that movie. Like he, <laughs> like he just didn't care. He'd be back. He was not fucking around. No, yeah, like f- fuck. He could fly. He could fly, <laughs> and he didn't use yeah. his ability in any other part in the movie. <laughs> he made an old woman carry him up the stairs when he could fly. Yeah, right. <laughs> that's if that's not a G, I don't know what it is. <laughs> But like no, that, look, that, that was amazing. Actually, I got I gotta say that scene was one of the best scenes in the movie. <laughs> like, the, the fact that like like you'd think it'd be awkward with the way the Witch of the West is like sweating and they're just moaning like old women who can't like move. But like it's so funny how they. I she, love. She's like she looks back at this dog. She's like he's just like. 
and he just doesn't <laughs> he just doesn't want to come up the stairs and she has to pick him up but she's old and frail and the witch of the west is just dying literally on the staircase and, <laughs> yeah, and, no, then, and, then, and then they're having their little like old woman like banter back at each other like why'd you say <laughs> i said i can't climb up the what stairs. are they selling well if i didn't have to carry this dog i wouldn't have to They're I, selling chocolate i could just i could help you out and it's just like but i'm not gonna help you out. get up here girl get up here and it's just like what the hell it's so and, and, weird and then she and then she like asks the soldier like can you help this poor woman out and, she, and he's, he's just like, like sorry we don't help sorry people. i'd rather do anything else <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I love that scene. And I think I think I think I got to say even though this movie like may have kind of like dipped down like sort of in the philosophy aspect, mm-hmm. it I think it's one of the funnier Ghibli movies. You it's, haven't seen Porco Rosso. Granted, I haven't seen Porco Rosso, <laughs> but like it's one of the funnier movies. It's funny like it it really I think it u- utilizes comedy really well. Like you think like it does. Like it like, is like like it's like, a really charming movie in general. Yeah, yeah. Like it's really it's funny how like, like those kinds of characters, those comedy relief characters, like mm-hmm. they get very watered down and just very tired after a while in certain movies because it's just like, look, I'm funny. I'm here to distract like everything oh. that's happening. But like no, like in in this movie, like they use it because like. It, it makes sense to the context of what's happening. This dog is old, fat, and lazy. He doesn't want yeah. to get up the stairs. He's very old and kind of like wheezy, and you know, like it, it just it it fits. And and I think it kind of fits the sort of the <laughs> the the um the aesthetic of this old woman too, uh, yeah. being Sophie. And like it's I don't know, it's it's and and very dilapidated, like this castle. Like it's just it fits the themes <laughs> of this like yeah. of this aging and kind of like this this brittleness and. Um, and, and, and it's funny to hear, cause I, in a way, like when, when Sophie's old, I, I hear a lot of like hi speaking through her, like as if he's like speaking like what it's like to be old, like, yeah. like, like, like he's just like, God, she, she would just say things in the beginning, like, God, ugh, it's so awful being old. It's just like, oh my God, that's high house speaking. Jesus and she's like, well, old's not being so bad. At least you, you're, you're cunning. High as he coughs through a cigarette. No, no, yeah, yeah. He's like, I guess old's not being so bad. You know, you're, you're cunning and all that. It's just like he, he puts like. Oh little, yeah, like, I actually yeah, like yeah. that line where it's like, I've gotten quite cunning in my old age. Yeah, yeah. Because like, it's, I actually <laughs> like that. It was, it was funny. It was like, ah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I like it, it's um. It's like I don't know. I I I heard a lot of Hayao through the older characters. Like I could tell, like that was a point in his life where he could tell that he was getting older, and he's like yeah. he's noticing all these little things about himself, and he's now like projecting it through these characters. And that that was I don't know. It, 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 you can tell there's a, you can tell that there was a lot of passion going into the movie, but but it was just very sloppy sloppily put together. Not yeah. because of laziness, but because it was just so. I feel like he was just bursting because the way Hayao is like he bursts like with excitement with these ideas and he's like I have to get it down I have to get it down and I think he's really bad at organizing them though so he he tends to get like a little lost in thought in his thoughts it's it's very stream of consciousness I think yeah which I think adds a sincerity yeah of very noticeable charm even when like even though I had some issues with this movie, I my, I had overwhelmingly positive reaction to it. It was yeah. very entertaining, and I think that's because like it's just you can tell that it's that there was like you said like a lot of passion going into it, and because when it's I think anything when it's stream of consciousness is almost always entertaining in the moment. Yeah, watching somebody just talk and improvise or like you know just make something up and you know have fun with it is always fun in the moment you know when you put it under a microscope later it usually doesn't hold up as well yeah but it's always fun in the moment yeah because you're with them there's this almost camaraderie because it feels like you are in the same spot you both like you and the person telling the story are both in the same boat you don't know necessarily where it's going to go it's yeah. sort of it's just on it's a train that's it yeah and and you i know? think i think that's where a lot of nostalgia kind of derives from there uh, i mean like i can tell you like when it, you know when i played golden sun or like pokemon there was this very like um there's a very personal experience with that like i mean like you said when you look under the microscope it's an rp they're just rpg games you know meant to satisfy customers and 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 you know make a living but like as a kid, you know, you, you really like, wow, like 
these aren't just like mathematical numbers, you know, meant to decide a battle. Like yeah. this is, these are Pokemon. These, these are, are my, brawling. like yeah. th these are living to my eyes. We've experienced stuff. Like you feel the world where there is none. And yeah. it, that's very awesome. And, uh, and it's, it's, it gets harder to do that as you get older, I think. And I think this movie is a good example of how you can like evoke that feeling of nostalgia, despite the fact that, uh, you might may have not ever seen this movie or 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 even just um because you're you're older and more conscious because i think when you're younger there's something about like having less consciousness that makes things a little more uh profound and kind of um kind of wonderful you know like yeah. th there's something about being less conscious that makes things kind of more uh engaging because you're you're just learning about them you're just connecting to them you're just you're just discovering your feelings and it's not something that you can water down with knowledge and wisdom. It's, it's very new and very, uh, emphatic. So like this movie does a good job of displaying that despite despite us, you know, getting very nitpicky about it. Like, yeah, I, and I, and I get, I don't know about how you felt about that, but I, 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 I really did feel that, I mean, granted I did watch this as a kid, but it it brought that back within me, and, well, and I think it, that's just I think that's very characteristic of of Hayao and even Isao, just Ghibli movies in general. Like, yeah, yeah, because I think that nostalgia is obviously it's you know, it's a yearning for something that's you know gone. But I think that nostalgia, um, I don't know if there's a name for it, but there's a feeling that's very it's analogous to nostalgia that can be evoked spontaneously. Yeah. The the idea of like something feeling like it connects yeah to something, you know, in your life. And you don't like, want to share it. it. Yeah, and like yeah, you don't want to share private, it with anybody. Yeah. yeah like it's it's right. it's yes. Yeah, so, well, okay, so that I think I think we've kind of wrapped up with our ideas. <laughs> it, it it went a little longer than I thought, but, <laughs> yeah, but yeah, but I think it was good to get all these thoughts. This is kind of this is what I really wanted the podcast to be. Just just Getting all of our thoughts out and and, just, and, and really getting an introspective of the movies because I tend to like, I feel like I glaze over these movies and that's a shame because after I saw Princess Mononoke I'm like holy crap like, I I gotta like I, I just have to talk about these these <laughs> movies they're just so good yeah. and, and they have their flaws that you know they they're obviously very, uh you know sort of it's because of their passion that they, they get kind of shaky with the narrative, but they, there's something about them that glistens among other movies yeah. that, 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 that are important to talk about and because they have values that, that are important to somebody and he's trying to share them to other people. I think that's what I get from his movies. He's sort of sharing like a, not maybe a childhood side of himself, but like, I would say he, he's just, he's trying to, with all the bitterness that he always rags on about about reality, <laughs> you can tell that he, like he 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 has some semblance of of love for yeah, he's this not, world. Like, as much yeah, as like, I think he wants to project yeah. that, I don't think he's a cynic. No, yeah, like he. I think he has a very strong love of life. Yeah, he he just isn't very good at expressing it personally. I and think. I think like, that the fact that he's so he's, he's, he's very he's very critical too, very critical. But that's because yeah. he. Because he's very is, passionate. It's, yeah, yeah, he's passionate. This is serious to him. Yeah. And that's something that I think, you know, is why so many people admire him. Is because it's not a joke. Yeah. This is what he does. He takes it very yeah. seriously. It's like, and that's why I think, like, he hasn't just been a one-off director. He's been the most, like, one of the most prolific directors yeah. in anime. Yeah. And one of, the, uh, probably the most well-known name in anime in the West, at least. Oh, yeah. It's just like, you know, and that's why... I wouldn't be. I wouldn't even be surprised if he was one of the reasons that like, it's popularized in the Western world too. Like the anime. Like yeah. it, like I'm sure there are other. That was a lot of people's introduction to it. Yeah. Like I'm. I'm sure like there are a lot of influences, <clears throat> but I feel like Ghibli is like one of the biggest like, uh, gateways to anime. Yeah. In the is same Ghibli way. Is Ghibli the that... gateway drug to anime? <laughs> no. No. Way. The reason I say no, no is because um my the reason. Ghibli movies are popular in the West. They're popular everywhere. Is because they describe things that are universal, and so they describe in this one a resistance to change, not wanting to grow up. That's something that exists in all cultures. Sure. And so it doesn't matter if you translate it to a different language. The message of the movie will always resonate. If you look at you know 
any t- take any movie like they describe very human things look at the most popular kind of anime which is shonen yeah it's just it part of the reason why that was i mean that was my gateway into anime and ghibli wasn't i yeah. had never seen ghibli movies yeah. until f- like fairly recently yeah so like you know like that was my introduction was f- like naruto and dragon ball and like those were my that was what got me into into animu it's and yeah so ma- that like, was my thing i would say i would say and it's, it has yeah. a similar thing the idea of growing up um these sort of subjects that transcend and that was why i never got into like slice of life or anything like that it yeah. was too it was always too specific to japan yeah and i'm i'm not gonna rag on that um but it's just that's why it was never a big thing for me is because that I, was I also, alienating i also a, felt that like a lot of like uh i just feel like a lot of um uh, ideals in Japan and kind of like uh, responsibilities. I feel like they just don't resonate with like a lot of Western customs. No. Like, cause like Japan is a very insular culture. Yeah, it's it's very like reserved. You have to like every yep. you have to be very like. Whereas in contrast, you have to be very America, obedient yeah. and kind of like you know, uh, kind of respective to your elders, kind of like thing. And like I get like those are very admirable uh, concepts. Don't get me wrong, but it can be kind of rigid and kind of like. It just makes things very frustrating just, to seems, fall under. It seems so, foreign yeah. to Americans. Yeah. Where Generally, there's almost yeah. a... Um, it, I feel like it, in America... Or, but really just in the West in general. But as an American, I just can speak more on this. Like, the idea of, like, America and everybody else in the West has this uh, romance of, like, the underdog. Yeah. And, like, being the rebel. So, yeah. like, it's just, like, there's always... There's a huge part of Western culture with this idea of rebelling against against your parents rebelling against school rebelling against all these things those, those are very romanticized things and it's generally considered something that everybody goes through in some way or another but now it's become kind of trite because of that it's like, always it, been trite Ivan. yeah <laughs> it's always been trite. Well, like it just didn't seem yeah. trite when we were doing well it. no i mean it's like i feel like there are concepts of the underdog that go well but like but i think the way we display it here it's just such a it's such a like pursued uh situation like it's such a pursued idea that like it makes everyone look stupid while they're trying it you know like like they <laughs> well that's but like, here's they're, the... like they're just like every because everybody wants to be the underdog that's why being the underdog is not <laughs> as cool anymore yeah it's like, it's like but it's, that's because the... then they look like <laughs> yes i don't know. i agree with you oh, yeah. but that's the what i was trying to say was just like yeah, yeah. in Japanese culture, and, and I'm not an expert on it. I don't know shit. All I know is from nah, I'm, I'm a, what I'm, I've seen. Yeah, I'm pretty much a dilettante when it comes to that kind of stuff. But so like, like, I, but you I, know, that's I not as much of a yeah. thing. If you watch like yeah. a lot of, if you watch like any high school based anime, usually what you find is like the main character is this sort of bland ish stand in for the viewer, yeah. right? And so. But you'll notice that they're almost always somebody who does like they're like a C student. They do average in school. They're relatively boring. They have some friends, a social life, but not or they, very or, active. One. Or they excel in their grades, but no one gives a shit. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, but there's these are very like that you yeah. can see from media because media is a reflection of people. Yeah. You can see that like that is either the average of what Japan's viewing or at least anime consuming culture is Mm -hmm. or the average of japan like as a whole you could say in that age range but whenever you see a character in an anime of like you know the dude with the pompadour and the ridiculous like face like like, you know the fucking i imagine gto whenever i see any of this (laughs) but anyway uh fucking (laughs) whenever you see that character they're almost universally made fun of yeah they always pick fun so like i don't know if it's because anime is a nerdy thing and so, like, it's like nerds making fun of jocks. No, but... I, th- I think I, no, I, th- I almost feel like I, I, this might be a little strong-handed for me, but like, I think I almost feel like it's it's like the uh, the industry trying to look down upon like these punkish attitudes because it's a very kind of like it's a very kind of regulated like school system where you have to wear uniforms exactly. and so that's what yeah, i'm trying to say yeah, is that, yeah, that, like, that rebel that's yeah. not something that's encouraged 
it's, in American culture, like it's, being yeah. in a band in high school and like even like we're not we're very against smoking now. But the yeah. reason why I've been oh, I've been a smoker for so many years is because I fuck it, 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 it's everywhere. It's always yeah. it looked cool, so I did it. <laughs> That's fuck. Yeah. That's why. Like I don't know, but that's the reason why. <laughs> trace any bad decision that a teenager makes. Why do so many kids like? Why are so many kids potheads? Oh well, maybe <laughs> it's because we kind of glorify it. Yeah. Or why are so many kids like you know if if your thing is like oh well, well you shouldn't have sex before you're married. Blah, 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 blah. Well then quit glorifying it. If yeah. that's what you really want, that's obviously not what you really want. And I have no issue with that. But like oh, it's yeah. just the point. Like if you're like American culture glorifies a lot of things that Japanese culture is like. No, no, no! I don't understand this. No, yeah, absolutely. So I don't know because I, th- I think they have kind of. But that's why. Oh this... well, yeah, <laughs> but like one last tangent. I think it's just kind of like uh, it's a. This is a stretch, so I'm sorry if I get this wrong culturally. I but I think there's. It's I'm be- typing my response. <laughs> but it's like, Type. but it's like I think because there's such a general respect for higher authorities and and like elders and and the, yeah. you can tell that it's like experienced people have the say in japan so you can tell that like they put their foot down when shit needs to get done in america it's kind of like i don't know just fucking just whatever just do it whenever you know just, yeah just, it's like it's so it, because we like we sort of entertain the thought of the rebel it kind of it kind of dilutes the rigidness in the yeah. society, and it makes we just, authority a joke. Yeah, and, which encourages rebellion. Which it, which encourages <laughs> like which is why rebellion is so trite now because and, it encourages and, and, which is why shit goes down the tubes. It's why our educational yeah. system is garbage. Yeah, which, which is why we have the largest yeah. prison population. No, in the yeah, world. yeah. It, it's like it's so funny how like <laughs> this is we, so depressing. Like now. We, it's so funny how like we make fun of authority, but it's like it's because of authority like shit gets done but at the same time i also understand why authority is very you know yeah. grating to listen to but like maybe that's just because like also japan has yeah, issues because know. of that no everyone does you have an issue with any concept japan has a yeah, serious but like, serious problem but you can tell like how, to- <laughs> but i guess the point is you can tell the the cultural differences yeah. in their attitudes yeah but the whole point and, of this was to say like ghibli movies i think resonate yeah. much more because they don't focus on things like that slice of life shows will always be more geared towards japan and less geared towards america and the west as a whole just because they embody a lot of traits that the west doesn't really and it's not to say that things like i mean there's certainly examples of it like haruhi is a great example yeah of something that blew up like pretty hard in the west which well, is I mean, kind of weird because like haruhi's like i it's not all amazing in general but i didn't like the show i love the movie though the, the movie's movie great the movie's great the show is just kind of like i mean you the know, show's all right it's well, I mean, like, it's, a, whatever. it's it's yeah. good for a slice of life which i yeah. don't usually like yeah um oh another one i and this is just because i'm a faggot i, I really <laughs> like toradora that's because I love Toradora. I'm a faggot. Dude, no, I I, I, I'm, a, I'm a I'm a sucker for romance. I am. I'm, I'm a sucker. And also, I, the yeah. the one thing, my favorite part of that show is that they actually acknowledge even that if they a, make eyes yeah. mean. Yeah. Yeah. Like, 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 <laughs> it's yeah, like, like they actually. It's a character point of like this guy's actually really nice, but the animators just drew him really mean. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like like it's it's. I, I'm a, like even if the show is extraordinarily bad, like Sword Art Online, let's say. Yeah. Like, I am a sucker for romance to the yeah. point where like I will just ignore all of that and I'll be like, it's oh worth my god. It for that. Yep. Even if, and, and you remember and, Rosario and, and Vampire? I, well, and I'm pretty sure that like Sao is pretty famous for having a pretty shitty romance, but bad, yeah. but like I still fall for it, and it's like yeah, and, because we're saps. Yeah, like that's just <laughs> how we're faggots. That's yeah. what I'm saying. <laughs> But so yeah no I've seen I've actually seen Rosaria Vampire when I was young exactly yeah. I that yeah. show strung me along so hard yeah because I'm like oh maybe and then nothing maybe finally but nothing maybe. ever concludes I'm so yeah. pissed you know what another show did that um uh remember uh, uh fuck Negima yes yep that was another one uh Love Hina uh, never I'm seen that to, you've never seen Love Hina. I, it's that's one of the, like the OG it's, harem. It's, it's one of those animes where like you see it everywhere, but yeah. you just don't want to watch it. I don't know. Like, I actually, do yeah. you know why I watched that show? Why? Because of uh, AMV Hell. <laughs> there were so many jokes about Love Hina in there. I'm like, what? I have to watch it now, and I just did. <laughs> that was why I watched Negima too, because I was I fucking <laughs> never <are, are, laughs> showed me AMV Hell. Oh my god, <laughs> ruined me. <laughs>
Oh, yeah. I was gonna say, oh! Stro, you're like the, the least anime guy He's I know. Now. Like, okay. <laughs> weird now. Nick wow. Is like, we can't yeah. say his full name. I just realized we said his full goddamn name. Oh! That's a unique name too. It's just a good. It's a good name. It is a good it's name. A good he's, name. He's it's like I mean, please. That's a fucking good name. Stop naming full <laughs> names of people we know in real life. We're gonna a, have to edit all of this out. It's uh, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> like, we're gonna have to clip this last like twenty minutes because it was completely irrelevant. <laughs> well, anyway, but actually, to, but to finish off, like, I think it was wrong of me to say that it's it's a gateway to anime. I would say it's just a gateway to good movies. Like, it's just yeah. Because I think Ghibli is very... When you watch the movies, like... Maybe, I don't know. I'm not sure if the style is necessarily reminiscent. But, like, it's very... It stands alone as just a good animated movie in general. Like, you, you don't even think of anime when you watch these I think movies. they're just... Well, that's because yeah. they use... Because um, they, they just don't use bizarre, tropes. Yeah, anime like, has a yeah. bizarre structure. Yeah. Um, it's different. Like, J Japan has a different way. And I think Asia and the East in general have a different structure of storytelling and so and that's really evident which is why like some people will like they'll try anime out and it's jarring to them not yeah. even because like oh they happen to watch a bad dub or anything like that it's like it's just the narrative structure is weird yeah it's like their way of storytelling there are certain tropes that are evident it's like what the, why are they doing this why are they acting this way it's frustrating and i encountered it recently like when i tried to just go back and just start watching a show not even like a great show just a show sometimes and it's it, like yes yeah, oh. sometimes it kind of upsets me like it's not even that's why not, i'm hesitant like, to like call it's, myself it's, an anime fan because no, like, yeah, like i, I like it's not, it, like it, it's not even because the anime is necessarily bad or good it's just like it's awkward it's like a, there's yeah. just like characters don't act this way like it, it's funny like um You'll read in like a book, like like mm -hmm. like let's say Mark Twain. Like these characters are very real, but they just act very normal. You know, it's very it, rude of you to bring up books. You know, I can't read. <laughs> you fucking illiterate <laughs> shithead. But like, no, it's like, but like, it's just funny how, um, it's just funny how like this like renaissance of like storytelling, like, even before Twain, like they had a very like very normal way of depicting characters but they had very like flamboyant ways of like uh expressing metaphors and like personification and um and themes like they yeah. had very subtle ways of doing it. but with anime it's like very blatant very like uh very obnoxious trite often like because they use tropes and they stereotypes and archetypes and it, it tends to water down a lot of the the uh the meaning and kind of the the yeah, and, and even and, like I don't know, it it makes it feel kind of far fetched, I guess. Like I think it's one of the most yeah. jarring uh, things that I encountered, and I think it's something that most people encounter is that um, archetypes in anime are not the same as arch like Eastern archetypes and Western archetypes are different. No, they're yeah, not yeah. the same. Uh, for example, the concept of uh, uh, what. What is that? It's also just it's a word it, yeah. for the, the the character who's just a ter terrible, awful bitch. Oh, uh, Tsundere? Yes. Tsundere? The like... most irritating archetype in the world. Yeah. They're dishonest. They're weird. They pop up in every show. It's cancer, and I yeah. hate it. And it's the number one reason why I don't watch or I hate religiously like, yeah. anime. Or, or, like, I hate, like, passive characters that are, like... Exactly. That, like they're they're so characters they're, that they're are spineless. So, yes, yeah, but it's like they're <sighs> so good that like it's almost kind of impossible. Oh, yeah. Or, yeah. And, and oh, just they, like, yeah, the Mary Sue. Yeah. yeah like it's and, or like, like or even or even just like um, I don't know, just like or or they or they just really harp on these like morals, like I'll never betray my friends. I have or, a like, code. Like, it's like, like shut up. Or or like 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 but like. But I've made my reason, and I'll stand up for that reason, and therefore that's why you can't stop me for that reason. Oh, and it's yeah. like they make this whole speech, and like in real life, no, like I mean, well, okay, they, yeah. get me, don't get me wrong, I don't want anime to become realistic. It's just not believable character wise. And I, I don't think, think it's, it's like it's not very because you... like you, you, they're just pouring these monologues to like ham fist their like. Their 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 ideology, or not even ideology, but just their beliefs, and it's yeah. just like 
it, it, it's just like nobody would would listen. Nobody would give a <laughs> shit. Like, like, and that's jarring. Yeah, if you are like, not like nobody's like used to it. Like, like they make it sound like everyone's like an intellectual in the show who's like listening and like like taking the time. Like, oh yeah, go ahead. Like, I'm going to like listen to all your reasons and then <laughs> and then like like no like y- y- you would you would like yeah. you would say you would you create dialogue to uh, to imply those reasons not not to exactly like like, yeah. you, like you, you they they say something because of those beliefs not not blatantly <laughs> s- s- like citating yeah. a fucking like like fucking like what, like, what is hold it? up i got to i got to look this up on wikipedia yeah, for a second. what, what, what a do second. they what do they call it in the fucking marxism the, um, they, they, it's not like they have like a manif- oh, yeah, manifesto it's, it's not like they have like a manifesto <laughs> of like all their fucking beliefs that they're just going to pour down on the yeah. fucking antagonist and the antagonist is just like I, I'll listen, I guess. Yeah, Even though like, I have a knife to someone's throat. Yeah, yeah I guess I'll. No, I'll yeah, stop. like, but like my, my my favorite is just like where like their reaction. They're just like they're either like pissed off because they feel like they've lost or something. Like, <laughs> damn it, his argument was better than mine. Oh. Or or just like, <laughs> or just like I've had enough. And then ah. and then he fails inevitably somehow. Like, yeah. I don't know. It's just like it's very it's, and it's not just shonen. It's not. It's oh, that even, like, exists it, everywhere. It's everywhere. And That's it's prolific. Like, it, it's even in Seinen. It's even in. That's... It's everything. It's everything. It's fucking everything. And it's like it, it's. I don't. I I don't know. It's very immature structure. Eh, whatever. And I honestly to, to, I, to each their own. I still I'll always own. remember there was um, One Piece right? Yeah. It was the um the arc with the fish dude who was yeah. the captain of the fish. it was a good arc oh it was um was it horty and she's like eating all the drugs and becomes bigger and stronger no 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 no. it's like the first arlong arlong, arlong yeah okay that's one of the best i like it yeah and but i one, was noticing yeah. like so luffy yeah. when he finally is like oh shit we gotta go get nami yeah and he goes over there <laughs> and like and it's a really cool fight thing yeah which is, I mean, that's one of Shonen's uh, strengths is that it's great at action and that sort of oh, thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's awesome. Um, but there's this whole thing, like, they stop everything. First of all, the fight with Arlong is three episodes. <laughs> But they stop the action, and this is which, why which it's is three actually, episodes. Which is which it's, is actually because which is actually funny because that's like that kind of that, that's, that's technically short compared to like what other shonen. I mean, do. Dragon Ball like Dragon, started that. Dragon well, Dragon Ball, Ball and Naruto. Dragon Ball Z started. No, that. Well, Dragon Ball and Naruto will start. Well, they they will extend their fights for like seven episodes not like three is like ridiculous technically short ridiculous. like yeah like but like i can see like from the first like someone who first <laughs> views Shonen, i can see how like someone who first views shonen they can see that as long but yeah like, but yeah. part of the reason why everything is so mother cunting long yeah. is because luffy would stop all the action and just be like yeah i'm gonna tell you why you're you're such a a, a bad well, guy yeah because friendship is the meaning of blah, blah, blah. It's well, like, well 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 i don't like well, i mean well, i luffy, get it well I, I would say luffy is kind of he's different from some shonen i mean i have a soft spot for one piece but like i do too but like but, most but, people do. but the thing is like luffy's famous for not really explaining anything about himself he's kind of just like fuck you friends and then he beats you up like he doesn't go into monologues the people who go into monologues are his are his friends <laughs> like they they're the oh, ones yeah. that are like he's doing this because uh, uh, friendship and and it's just like because it cuts it cuts back to the audience it cuts, it cuts back to the people watching him fight and then he, but he's like so dense headed that he just like he's so bullhorned that he doesn't fucking explain anything oh yeah that he's was just an- yeah like he's just like Fuck off! And then when he finds out, like, oh wait, this is what's happening. That was Whoops. that was another it's point like, of frustration yeah, it's where like, it's like in the the Arlong thing specifically, where they're having the fight and it would cut to like Sanji and be like, oh wait, no, they didn't even have Sanji at that point, did they? Um, did they have Sanji? No, yeah, they did. They did. Yeah, they had Usopp, Sanji, and Zoro at that point. All right. Yeah. So like, it would cut to them and just like, oh, like. <laughs> Luffy's, you can tell he's passionate about. It. It's like, don't explain what's going on. Just show me the thing. No, because it, it, show, it, don't tell. It, this is like it, one yeah. of the. It's it's it, the it, most basic lesson in storytelling. It, it, it loses the subtlety. <clears throat> it loses the subtlety and it loses the nuance. Of Remember the, when of this was a feelings. conversation about Ghibli? No, yeah. So <laughs> basically, I'm to, gonna run out of space. I I have more memory. It's okay. Oh like, my god! What? How, how long have we been recording for? An hour and a half. Dude, you only ha- you had under two on that SD card. Did I? Yeah, it was like an hour and fifty eight. Well, I'll have more on that one. Oh, you bought all the other one. 
I, it, I was, yeah, it came actually, with it. I was in fact, I bought, I bought that thinking I didn't have an SD card, but I was wrong, and I had one with the the recorder, so I, I have was, two now. I yeah. was thinking, um, you know what we should do? Yeah. Um, we should watch Nausicaa. <laughs> yeah, eventually. And then... Yeah. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> well, yes. <laughs> but, like, no, we should watch Nausicaa and then record our thoughts, like, next weekend. Why don't we do the same thing? So, like, we'll record our thoughts, like, after we've had time to, like, marinate about it. Well, I, I think we sh- we can do just two sessions. One where we, after the movie, and then, like, maybe it's not as long. Although it's probably going to be long. It's going to be just, long as fuck, but it's Ivan. Fine. It's fine. Like, it, it's fine. <laughs> no, I mean, but I really like today? Uh, well, like... I actually have to, I have to be somewhere, like, around seven-ish. That's same. So, like, we have time. So, like, yeah. yeah so, like, but, like, no, I was just thinking, because I really liked being able to, like, kind of hash these things out and, like, think about it. No, and yeah. And kind of let it marinate in my brain for a while. Well, and let's, then, let's, like, how about, like, because I'm, I'm, I'm actually very, like, excited to talk about what. Have you already what, seen Nausicaa? Once. I've seen it once. Oh, okay. And it was actually kind of technically recently during the summer oh. of this year, 2017. Right. But, uh, just for those. <laughs> TM. Uh, for the, for those viewers who don't know. But this like, year, summer, 2017. Trademark. <laughs> yeah. But like, um. Trademark Disney. But like uh, uh I I I'm just kind of over excited to, to have the like just to talk about it after we see the movie. But oh, I, but yeah. I to- but I totally get what you mean. Like I would like to have like No, a, yeah, I don't it, yeah. I don't care. We're going to talk about it no matter what. No, it's yeah, but like, I, of, like but like I would like to have a session where where like you said, marinate over it and then it'll kind of sweeten the crit- criticism. And it'll it'll just yeah. we'll, it'll mar- we'll marinate the sauce. We'll yeah. throw, throw some butter in there, throw it, some onions, oregano. Oh! We'll be like oh! we'll, we'll be like Arby's. We'll be like Arby's. <laughs> Dude. I really hope when I do that, when I like shriek, it's not like ripping apart the audio. <laughs> it's well, t- very it, well it might actually be. T- it actually tells me what, how much, uh, uh, like how high the decibels oh, yeah. are. Yeah, if you, oh, we can't really. See. Does that have a backlight? It does, but I think I have to. I don't want to click buttons to do that because it might ruin the recording. I click buttons. But like, uh, it. But like, um, I'm in 2017. <laughs> but but like, uh, what do you call it? It will be like Arby's, where we just let the meats like fucking like sit and like toast yeah. for like seven days. Okay, Arby's is a bad example. No, you know how they always advertise where it's like the yeah. meats are like what 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 is it? Not not roast. It's like Brisket. roasting. It's like it, no, it's smoked. So you have like it, the smoke. Yeah, they're, thing. so they're like smoking it for like a week, and then finally you can eat it. Which they're not doing i know it's a fast food place does anybody believe them i'm talking directly to whoever might see this in the post-apocalyptic future he's even if you still have arby's he's even looking at the microphone if you still have a microscopic person watching you goddamn lavalier mic if they still have arby's (laughs) do you actually think it's real no it's not it's not real (laughs) <laughs> it's a conspiracy it's reptilian but we'll we'll be the uh we'll be the uh the the genuine arby's of this uh La- you don't Kadir. have to say arby's you could just say <laughs> people smoke meat genuine, that's like no, what g- you genuine arby's <laughs> stop attaching it to arby's arby's didn't invent it we're quick and digestible that's why we're arby's <laughs> <laughs> i would not call arby's digestible <laughs> <laughs> i would not use that <laughs> technically arby's is like i oh uh, i like, ne- i never had a problem with them but i only ate once there so really twice there i shit yeah. out my intestines last time i ate arby's i i'm not a very like a stomach upset kind of guy my i yeah. i swear to god really like beans kind of unsettle me but not that not really no, I'm, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm pretty like solid when it comes to food i yeah. i like um i like middle eastern food but I hate and gassy. Fuck gas, man. I, I hate, it destroys my intestines. I love halal guys. Ghibli's great. Isn't have it? you ever? Have you ever eaten? <laughs> <laughs> have you ever eaten halal guys? What the fuck? No. It's a it's a chain. It started oh, in New halal. York City. Oh halal. Okay. No, I, yeah. I've never had no. I've never. Halal, had halal. guys is amazing, and I love it. And because it, it's like it's Middle Eastern, but it's kind of fusion. It's like some Greek food. It's like some kind of Persian food. It's awesome, right? Yeah. I when I worked in New Haven. I had halal guys every day for lunch. And I swear to God, it felt like a fucking giant Arabian shit was <laughs> cutting its way out of my anus with like a curved sword. <laughs> just like ripping through my fucking anus like oh tissue paper. It was ridiculous. <laughs> is that- I, my ass is so fragile. It just it can be wiped out. Like the Armenian population. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. I Just kidding. Was... There's no such thing as the Armenian genocide. Fuck me. <laughs> Just as much as Arby's doesn't fucking roast their meats. <laughs> Fuck me. Just like Arby's fucks me. 
Uh, we're sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great way to end. We're just sorry. All right, we're, here we go. We're gonna watch Nausicaa. Um, we're good. Yeah. All right. Bye. 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 We love you. I don't love you. I don't know who you are. We're talking to the microphone. Get out by of the way. Here. Stop. Stop <laughs> listening to this. This is a private conversation. What are you doing here? Buddy? Holy shit! Are Put your people... phone away. Are you recording? Why are, are you listening? recording? <laughs>